So the agenda for uh, today's uh, session uh, would be uh, what, what are all the object oriented features in Objective C. Okay. And the first um, object oriented feature that we will be looking at is called inheritance. Um, inheritance enables uh, the class that you created. Uh, you don't need to basically reuse, rewrite these classes where by using the inheritance property, you'll be able to actually use uh, the class that you have created already. And mm, the typically, the classes from which uh, you inherited is called a base class and the class where you are uh, actually inheriting is called a derived class. Uh, in the case of Objective-C, uh, the actual inheritance, the way in which you declare an inheritance is at interface is the actual uh, header file declaration that you, we usually have, derived class followed by a semicolon followed by a base class. Um, a derived class, uh, uh, the inheritance has some access control um, and let's look at what all the access control that the uh, derived class provides. Uh, the derived class can access all the private members of it base class if it's definition uh, defined in the interface uh, class but it cannot access the private members that are defined in the implementation file. So we will see an example so that you can understand it better. Um, the derived class basically inherits all the base, class, base classes methods and variable with the following exception. Uh, the variable declared in the implementation file uh, with the help of uh, extension is not accessible. The method declared in implementation file with the help of extension is not accessible. Uh, in case the inherited class implements a method in the base class, then the method in the derived class is executed. Um, so this is what an example that we're going to uh, see. An inherited class um, has implemented the method which is also available in the base class, then the method in the derived class is executed, not the base classes one. So that is very important property here. Um, so first, uh, to demonstrate how the actual execution of uh, the inheritance happens, let's uh, directly jump into a demo of uh, the inheritance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project for day three which is also going to be a command line tool and I'm going to call it as interleaf day 3 and I'm going to have a foundation framework. I'm not going to use any automatic reference counting and create this particular project. As I said, the main.m is a default uh, class that gets created and it has some default uh, set of code and you can just execute this code to just to verify whether things are okay. And it executed successfully. And to see the result, you can actually uh, enable uh, the command and the bottom uh, control where uh, you can see uh, what is there, uh, what is the result that gets produced. Now we get a full picture of how uh, the results are being displayed is available here. Now the hello world is displayed properly. Uh, we don't want any of this and just wanted to verify whether it is working okay. I'm starting from a clean slate. Uh, to demonstrate the inheritance, I have a sample class that I've created. I'm going to utilize that for demonstrating that. Let me just copy paste that so that uh, uh, we can understand the inheritance very clearly. Right. Here, what I'm doing is, I have a person object, a person class, uh, which is uh, the root class, which inherit from NS object. And it has uh, uh, two methods which are declared, uh, init with name and print. And that's just a declaration, this is just a header part of it. That implementation we should implement. Now here, uh, at implementation is nothing but the implementation piece of it. Uh, we are going to implement this class percent and it is going to have the methods which are declared will get implemented. We have two methods, we are implementing those two methods here. The init with name and print. The reason why this init with name, uh, if you declare a method uh, with uh, a init with something, then that particular method can be accessed at the time of creating an object. 
we will see in this example how the actual init with name method is accessed specific to this person class. Now this particular class is entered here. Now I'm going to create an employee class. This employee class basically the syntax represents that I'm creating an employee class which inherits the detail from the person class which inherits the details from the person class. This being the case, so everything that you have, all the methods, members you have on the person class can be accessed from the employee class. That is what this uh, inheritance actually uh, enables us. Now here I'm having just a string, employee education as a new string I'm declaring. We have not looked at in a string yet, but just to consider that it's just a representation of a string. And here, once again, I'm writing the same method. Here the declaration, there is no other declaration is there, but the actual declaration is available only in the person class for this method in it with name and age. And the same method without any declaration, uh, we will be able to actually directly, uh, you know, uh, write the method definition. There is method declaration for two methods. One is print, which is exactly same as the print method that is that is being declared here. And another method in it with name and age and the education is what is available in this uh, particular person class. Now these two methods are declared here. And from the implementation point of view, we'll be implementing these two methods that we have created. Okay, now uh, we have two class. One class is a person, then another class is employee, which inherits the person. And both of them, if you look, has the same method called print, but has a different init with uh, method. Only two parameters. The seven, second one has three parameters. Now, let's look at uh, an object creation. Now, um, here for the person class, for the person class is the root class that we looked at. You can create an object. I'm creating an object called person. I look, and as I mentioned, in the case of in this case, uh, we have a method explicitly uh, declared called init with name method. I'm going to directly use that method for initializing this particular person class. So when this particular line of statement executed, an object will get created called person. And it already has this method in it with name method called with two parameters being passed, Raj and five being passed. And these two information, the, when I call from person print, that particular method which is available in the person class will get printed. And we will see that in a minute. Now we have employee class, which is an inherited class, derived class from the base class called person, for which I'm creating an object, and which, which is called employee, which has three parameters, where Raj, five, with an education qualification. When I'm printing the employee class's print, let's see what happens. When I execute this method, you can see that the, the print available in the base class when I'm calling, the actual uh, print on the base class gets printed. But when I'm calling the print from the derived class, then the method available on the derived class only gets called. The print on the derived class is getting print. So th this, this is a property of how an inheritance actually works. You have the same method uh, signature available on both the base class as well as on the derived class, then only the derived class method will get executed. That's what has been proven. And that's what has been proved in part of this uh, execution. So thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, attending uh, this session.